I was I would I used to interview in Mexico because we travel all to Mexico uh -huh. and I'd get in there and I didn't know them they didn't know me they heard of us because we went all over yeah. and I'd say listen don't use big words <laughs> and I said because I don't know a lot of real big big words and they said oh, don't worry Mr. Vida we, we know you know and so we'd start live and they'd fire a question I had no idea what she was saying but I, I got the tone of what I was supposed to say because I said it everywhere I went <laughs> And but they would use these big words that I don't I, use any big yeah, words. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll them. Okay, so first I just want you to say and spell your first and last name. My name is Gil Abeda, G I L A B E Y T A. Okay, so tell me, we're coming up on 25 years since Christopher's been missing. Kind of take me back to that night when it happened. Tell me what happened. You you actually never forget the first day and the first hours of what happened. You 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 don't believe it. You're in shock. Uh, you think it's going to end soon. You think that it's just happening and he's just mis mis misplaced. Somebody took him somewhere and just, and he'll be back. So you don't take it seriously. You then see the police start to come, news media starting to come, and you see a lot of people there. You still don't want to believe it. You still think, nah, this ain't happening. And why, if it would be happening, why is it happening? Why is it happening to us? And so, uh, it, it then you then go into a twilight zone type situation where uh, this isn't real. I'm having a dream. This couldn't be happening. And uh, so it, all those feelings and things happen to you that you never forget. And you go through them all the time. You're always thinking about it. You're always thinking of angles. You're always trying to remind yourself, maybe I missed this or did that. But uh, but that was the first hours that uh, that it was 25 years ago. Now, we have not changed our philosophy in 25 years. We have not stopped looking, and we never will stop looking. I don't care what people say. We don't know whether he's alive or, or, or dead. We choose to believe that he's alive. Uh, and we will continue until we're, uh, until we're not around. And that, that just that our commitment that we have made, and we have spent a lot of money, and, but money's money. And uh, so uh, that's our commitment, and, and, and as you have seen here lately, People for many years have been found. It just happens. Children are found by the eyes and ears of people, not by the police. Police will do something. But I mean, the eyes and ears. Somebody becomes very uh, curious. They notice something's happening. They notice they're being sheltered for some reason. They don't let them out. Uh, there's little ways that you can look at the behavior and be able to tell that there's something going on and at least inquire about it. And so, uh, that's what we're hoping, that, uh, that he will find us rather than we find him. So tell me about that night. Did you wake up in the morning and discover he was gone, or, or what happened that night? It was night? in the early morning, probably around 6 o'clock, um, and he was just maybe three feet away in the crib from us. And um, if somebody came in there, of course, we didn't hear him. But because we were used to house noises, we had kids living there, they go in and out, the door was open. Uh, whoever prepares for somebody walking into your bedroom and doing something like that. So uh, I slept. I, I probably slept all right. I must have slept good because I didn't hear anything. We woke up, and then I think, I think I was still in bed, and Bernice went into the crib and was looking for him. She didn't panic right away because she thought maybe he might be somewhere along the line of the house or something like that. But then I could hear, I could hear it. I could feel it. Uh, running around and yelling and no he's not here where is he and this and then so I got up again thinking uh, we're making a big deal out of nothing I don't think anything like this is happening but as as we sat there and the minutes started ticking away uh, he wasn't there so we called start calling some people the uh, sister-in-law or anybody that we knew that might somehow some way might have uh, picked him up or something nobody knew anything so then we called the police, and uh, the police arrived, and they actually arrived well for not knowing what they were doing. I'm, you know, I'm sure they, they have not received a call like that, well, very few in, in the years that they've been there. And so uh, the problem is that they, uh, by this time you have a sort of a panic going on. You got the kids uh, all shook up, Bernice is laying on the ground, um, people just shook up. And uh, the police come in and didn't put the yellow ribbon around to stop anybody from coming in. So other people were coming in, just walking in and out, which fingerprints, DNA, anything like that. We had lost a napkin that was, that was 
in the story in the early on that was on the uh, that because the driveway the driveway was very clean and clear, and there was a napkin that wasn't there, and we assumed and we didn't know for sure that the kidnapper came in and part of the napkin fell out of the car. Not a big thing, but at least something that we had, and we picked it up, saved it, gave it to the police. They lost it. Um, they then broke us up, which is what they should do in individuality, in the individually, and interviewed us. You know, where are you? What are we doing? What they see if they any how the stories match. We we didn't have anything to hide. We everybody told whatever it was. So those were the early moments, and 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 then we fell into shock. I mean, you still don't believe it. I didn't believe it for days that this isn't happening and couldn't be happening and why is it happening? You start asking all these questions. Who would do it? Why would they do it? And uh, we had to get the answers. We don't have all the answers on those on those questions, but that's what everybody goes through. You know, why were we picked? I mean, we had six kids. What we had maybe because we had seven, and then then they felt that they we didn't need another one. You know, we start coming up with our own logic of what what might happen. And uh, so we, we looked around at neighbors. Um, we just did whatever we could for, for her, but, but we were hurt and we were wounded as far as that goes with shock and what's going on. So we were not capable of really sitting down and come up with uh, why and all that, but we went through it. There had to be a representative from the National Center because they were just forming it that happened to be in town, came over to talk to us, but we were far out of it. We were just too, we were too, in shock, and whatever you tell us, all we wanted was Christopher. We didn't want to hear about all this kind of stuff, and everybody's calling. And and so then it started hitting the the newspaper. The police was flooded with hundreds of calls because of what happened. Flooded. They were not equipped to handle all the calls, so a lot of them slipped through the cracks. I'm sure. We didn't have roadblocks. We didn't have the what you have today, where you have signs on top and be aware of this, this, this wish we would have. And uh, so time went on and time became our enemy. Once, once they, you allowed them time and everything else, the, the longer it is, the harder it is to be able to find them. And the more you give the abductor the chance to get away. But a lot of publicity and it took us a while to actually recover. If we, we never, you never really recover from something like this because you live with it for the rest of your life. You're imprisoned, basically because of what happened and uh, the but slowly um, Denise for instance didn't want to go to school uh, everybody handled it differently Bernice was on medication I never took any medication I tried to be the real strong guy can take anything you know macho man but inside I was I was tore up so uh, time begins to heal or at least make you feel and accept it better even though you have no answers and we hired private eyes bad mistake spent a lot of money I threw money at problems sold cars sold everything we can if our, our, our 401ks anything we had to I money I, I was going to spend whatever it take to get every on the early moments and we spent thousands of dollars in the early moments just for nothing it was just and people knew that, you know. When, uh, so when, when I talk to people now and say, you, you want to hire a private detective, be careful. Because they know you're emotional. They know you, that you're willing to pay anything to get your son back, and they're going to take advantage of you. And they did. They, they, but they acted like they were investigating, but they never did. We fired them after a while. Um, we then tried to work with the police. That's all we had. And it was not much. Uh, from the very first two weeks, I criticized them and how slow they were doing it and everything else. I have been against them since day one. They, to this day, I still am. And uh, so, but we started, we had to cooperate. That's all we had. So we would go in and we would meet with them and they would ask us questions very formally. I was the first person to be brought in. Um, and the first que one of the first questions was, do you know who did this or why they would do this? I said, I have no idea. I said, I, I, I can't even think of who would want to do something like this. Uh, anybody unusual, non-family, anybody that, you know, that, I said, I only have one person that I know of. And one person that, you know, that uh, is a female. And 
and uh, and I gave her, I gave them their name, Emma, Emma Bradshaw. I gave them their phone number. I gave them everything. I said, you might check her out. I said, I, I don't know, but I'd like to find out. So um, they said, okay, and they finished with me, and and I was done with that. And I said, would you take a lie detector test? Yeah. Give me a lie detector test. I was the first one to take a lie detector test. And, uh, and everybody in the family had a lie detector test. Bernice had two of them. Again, my mistake. She, she was willing to cooperate with anybody to do whatever she had to do. And she asked me, should I take it? And I said, mm, you know, well, because they felt that the first one was because she was so medicated uh, and full of drugs and things like that, that she didn't react naturally. So they said, let's try it again. And I should have, I, 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 I thought about it and I thought, why? She, she, died. she didn't do it. Why were we even going through this mess? And, uh, but I did, and she was put through it. But she, <laughs> she did something very unusual. I haven't seen this being said. You might look at the, at the archives. She put recorders underneath the sofa on the FBI when they came to, to interview her. And they didn't know that. So you can imagine. Well, it was on TV. And so she taped, the, and they didn't like that at all. They were all upset. But she was protecting herself because she wanted to see what kind of questions she was going to be asked because when you at, when you're under an investigation they don't tell you half what they ask you and there might have also been some religious discrimination involved in this because the the two detectives one was a born again christian and he seemed to focus a lot on on religion at that time bernice was a jehovah's witness and that had nothing to do with uh with what we were did but he wanted to get in there and stir it up and everything else they came at her in a different way that they came at most of us. They saw that she was emotional, and they dwelt, they, they dwelt on that. They fell on that, and they tried to make her all emotional and probably break her down when she gets all emotional and doesn't know what she's saying and so on. And they kept her, they, they grilled her more than anybody else. In my opinion, she was the main suspect from the start. 